Okay, hi. Um, I'm not recording yet. Give me a second. I'm going to set some stuff up here. I was kind of called away. So, um, uh, but, but yeah, this is actually going to be for my operating systems course, um, or at least I'm starting. So if you have questions about the, about the, the operating systems 430 so far, let me know. I want to get my dev box up here. I had a couple things that I kind of wanted to maybe talk about. Okay, um, yeah, I'm going to start the recording here. So um, so for you guys that are here, like I said, these are, these are meant to be more like, you know, kind of uh, question and answer sessions or, um, you know, for you to come and ask questions and stuff. Um, so at any time, you know, chat, since put something out in the, on the chat or uh, just say it out loud on the microphone. So, um, Hopefully, I got about I got about half of the people seem to have submitted the first um, um, practice assignment, which I'd kind of asked for people to do by Tuesday. I'll probably still accept it. So basically, what I I'll, what I usually do on this first uh, practice assignment zero, uh, I might give a little bit of extra credit for the people that got it in on time, and I might still consider it on time if you get it in get that finished by like today or something um, if you're still working on getting up your dev box so um, a couple things information you know like, like I said uh, it, it's, whenever I think about stuff like this I tend to just uh, um, mention it so for, for one thing uh, hints about using your dev box um, you should always use the vagrant up and vagrant halt to bring it up and halt it so sometimes people you know, um, get it get vagrant working, but then they go and and you know bring up the 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 um, virtual box GUI and try and start it and stop it from there. So the the reason why that can be problematic is vagrant does things. It's managing if, if you're using vagrant to create these virtual machines and manage them, it does things like a setup. The most important one for our class is it sets up this um, shared folder here. Right, so you really need to use the vagrant up from the command line so you correctly get the shared folders set up um, on your virtual machine, uh, among other th stuff. So, um, so that's that, that's one thing to look at. So, so here, you know, another thing as you guys are doing this and getting used to it, when you do the vagrant up, it's, it's maybe a good idea to kind of look at these messages. So, you, for one thing, hopefully you'll see that it's checking for guest additions and that you don't see any message about any errors about they couldn't find them or couldn't uh, use the guest additions uh, because the guest additions are useful for interacting with this virtual machine and the other, the other one is that this shared folder is mounted so basically you want to see something uh, for like, if you're a Windows user you'll see something like it's mounted from here to that that folder on your C drive or something like that so if you're a, if you're a Mac user you'll probably see something like it shares that folder to your it'll be instead of home whatever it'll be uh, I can't remember what Mac uses um, for the path but uh, for home directories but um, oh so yeah the, like I said about half oops about half of you um, ha I, I I meant to give to look at all the submissions for the assignment zero zero that people had given me so far. I didn't get a chance to do that yet, so I'm going to check and 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 try and give you the one one reason for this assignment zero zero is is it's a practice um, so that you kind of at least know how to submit stuff. I'm going to do that here, right? So um, there's one thing that I know. Um, that um, I, I need to make it more clear or make an announcement about it um, for the 430 class. So you may or may not have seen this. Um, so you can build 
all of the assignments from the command line. So, so if you're in your dev box and if you bring up the terminal, uh, you can do all your building and other stuff from here, uh, run your unit tests and things like that. Um, so in order to, to use that, you'll have, you'll probably, you might want to become familiar with at least some of the basic Unix command line commands. Uh, and in fact, um, I should point, the, I, all this stuff is a bit of, we're, we're overlapping a lot of stuff in the videos, um, the, the video two, three, and four that I had, zero, zero, zero dash two, three, and four of this week, where I kind of show using your dev box um, and, um, and um, uh, using Visual Studio Code to work on the example assignment and stuff like that. So, um, but uh, yeah, one thing I mentioned in the, the videos uh, that you might not have noticed is um, uh, if you go into the, your repository directory under docs, um, there's some documents, uh, including um, a little, dev box command reference that I made up uh, with some some of the most useful it's, it's really just a reference of, of command Linux uh, bash commands that you might find useful to use from your command line plus uh, some uh, uh, a summary of the make commands in order to build your assignments and projects in there so that's one of the one of the documents among others in in the doc so again that's on the our uh, repository under docs here. Uh, and, and one thing that I wanted to, to, to mention also, going back to this idea of the shared folder, so if you open up or if you go to your home directory, you'll see that there's a repos here. Notice that it, it has a little um, um, uh, a little lock right there. And if you do a directory listing of your home directory, you, you should see that there's a repos directory um, all those owned by root. And if you if you change into that repos and look in there, you'll see that there's a CSCI 430. This this directory here is actually mounted and shared from your um, host machine. Okay. So um, so in fact, if you use the DF tool, you can see uh, down here that there's a mount. Um, um, uh, to your home repo CSA 430, and it's, it's actually being mounted from your host machine. Okay, so what that means is, um, like um, this, uh, my, my host machine is a Unix, is also a Unix, a Linux machine. But your host machine might be Windows or Mac OS. Okay, but if, if you go to that repository on your host machine on your normal laptop computer. Um, so as part of doing step four, when you did the clone under the repos directory, I told you to, to create, you'll have a directory called now the, uh, sorry, not uh, this is the operating systems class. So we have a directory called CSCI 430 OS Sims. Okay. Um, and um, uh, I just realized I, I actually have it in a slightly different place. So I have it in, in my boxes, but same, same idea, CSCF 430 OS Sims. So what I'm trying to get at those is if, if you like uh, put a file on here um, on your host machine, for example, I just put that on my, my host. I actually, I just copied the vagrant file and gave it a new name, but, but, but it's like adding a new file here, but I did that on my host machine. But if you go back into your dev box, into your guest machine, uh, and you look into your repository again, you'll see it's there, okay? So that's what I mean by this is being shared. This is being shared from your host to your guest. So you can, you can get new files from your host, however you move around files, like using your file browser, to move a file to your repository and then you can see those in your guest and vice versa so if if you go and um like for me i've already i think i've already built my assignment one so if i go on my my host machine and i look at my assignment one the example zero one tar.gzip um submission file is there so if, if i wanted to i could run my browser on my host machine and go there and i'll have you'll have the um submission file that you need to upload um, is in there. 
All right. So it's a, it's a use, useful thing to know that you can get files easily in and out of your from your host to the guest and out from the guest back to the host. So. So yeah, somebody asked a question if, if we can walk through the example one assignment and, and yeah, that's, that's, that's the next thing I'm going to do here. But, but yeah, keep, keep um, shouting out questions. Let, let's, let's kind of just work through um, the build process for the example one assignment. Um, there was one thing that was missing. So, uh, and you, uh, you can build this stuff in Visual Studio Code. I'm going to show using the make commands from the command line. And if we have time, I might go back and show some of this. From Visual Studio Code as well. Um, definitely at our next, you don't, don't um, to, to do the little assignment zero zero, all you really need is the command line for now. Uh, you got a little bit of time before our first actual assignment with the virtual machine is due. And probably next week I'll talk about our, um, sorry, about the hypothetical machine and the assignment one. But let's, let's look at this example assignment, which, which is what we use for what I call the assignment zero zero. In the class. So, so if you change into the repository on your dev box, um, and if you change into the assignment, you have to change into the assignment subdirectory. Um, and if you guys don't mind, I, I, I use ls-alh. This gives me a long directory listing. Dash l means long. So that, that means give every file or every end folder that's in my current directory. Um, on a single line with extra information like permissions and stuff. And if I use the dash A, it shows me both regular files and hidden files. And if I use the dash H, it gives uh, in human readable. So it gives like the size of the files in kilobytes or megabytes or whatever. But that's what those flags mean. I, I, I often have an alias. Uh, just D, single, the single letter D, so I can do a directory listing where it gives me a directory listing where it shows all the files, long listing, um, human readable. You could add other flags to that. So, so anyway, if you see me typing D a lot, I'm just using um, the, the, L, the ls command to list my file. Um, and I'm, I'm currently uh, in my assignment directory. So to work with the example 01, which is what you have to do for the assignment, for, for the, the, um, the practice assignment. You need to, for all the assignments, you have to change into the folder that holds that assignment before you can do anything with the assignment, like build it and stuff, okay? Um, and if I can bring this back up here again, the, the, the dev box reference. So, so like I said, I mean, there, there's other, um, command line tools that might be useful for you. I, I just use ls and pwd and cd to change directory. Uh, but you'll also, you'll be using a lot of these, the, the make commands to build, right? So if you forget, you can always do a make help and it'll, it'll give you um, a summary, hopefully of all of the one, all the things that you can do here. Okay. So normally to, to build an assignment or project, I usually start by doing a make clean in my directory just to remove everything, okay? So, so if you do that, you'll notice that it deleted all of the object files and other stuff. Okay? Um, so yeah, the, my normal um, workflow is like make clean before I start working on the project and then just use make so the, the default target is to, do, is to do a make all. So if you do make and you don't specify anything, um, so, so by default, if you do make and you don't specify a particular target, it will do a make all. So you could just say make, or you could say make all, it's the same thing. So that, that's the default target is to make everything in the project, okay? Um, hopefully I'll get some time to talk a little bit if you've never run across this level of, of building um, of, of building um, a program from separate source code files okay so in this case in the example one project um, directory I'll navigate to their assignment example zero one uh, you'll notice I mean it's the there's multiple CPP files which, which hold, which are C++ files, so they hold C++ source code. And there's also HPP files which are header files for C++ programs, okay? Some, some people use, you know, 
uh, C plus C with two plus signs um, as the extension instead of CPP like I did here. Likewise, some people use H plus plus for header files, but you'll also commonly see HPP as well for all those. All right. So all the, the make or the make all is doing is it's actually building, it's compiling each one of the, the files in the project separately. So this first one, it compiled the example one test.cpp into a, what's known as an object file, example one test.o, and then it compiled the example zero one functions.cpp out to its object file, example one functions.o, and then the third line here is it linked all these together. It, it also linked together um, um, a library called the simulator exception library, but basically we're linking together the example one test.o, the example one functions.o object file with the simulator exception library to create an executable called test here. All right. So the first thing I wanted to kind of mention to 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 everybody is is there is a step that you actually have to do first before you can make. Um, any of your assignments and before you can make this example one assignment. So let me, let me clean that up back up again. So in, in um, our repository for the, the CSCI 430, there's also a libs directory, which has some common libraries that are used for all the assignments. Uh, actually, there's just one common library, the simulator exception. Uh, but it won't be built for you when you first um, check out, you know, clone the repository. So, um, if if you went to example zero one, or if you went to assignment zero one and did a make, um, but if instead of it compiling com cleanly, you get the error message that you're going to see here that uh, it couldn't find the lib uh, simulator exception. That means that you have to do something first before you can compile your assignment or this example zero one assignment, okay? So the, the message that you'll see, which we'll see here in a second, uh, will happen when it gets to this step here. So when it tries to link these together, um, if the simulator exception library hasn't been built yet, um, it will fail to find that. And then this, this uh, linking together of these object files and the library will fail basically. Right. Compiling these, these tests um, takes a bit of time. We're using a, a test framework, uh, which I talked a little bit about in the videos, and I'll talk about, maybe not today, but um, I'll talk about in some of our future help sessions as well, or if, if somebody asked about it, I could talk about it a little bit, maybe today. Uh, but yeah, so you'll get this. So it can't find the, the, the dash L simulator exception. So that means that the simulator exception library isn't built yet. All right. So, um, so yeah, if you do get that, this error message um, and you don't have any uh, actual uh, uh, executables built that you can run, you need to, to change back up. So dot dot actually refers to the parent directory. So just, you know, um, more Unix command line stuff here. So when I see CD dot dot, it actually moves me up to my parent. So I go from being in the example zero one directory to the assignment directory. And if I do CD dot dot again, I move from the assignment back up to the root of my repository, which is the CSAF 430, okay? And I'm changing the lib. So anyway, so, so yeah, you do have to change into libs and make that, you only have to do that once really unless I make a fix to the library, but you probably will only have to do that this week. And then it'll be good to go for all of the rest of the class. Okay, so once you've made that, if you go back to the example zero one assignment, now if you do the make, so notice when I do the make here, it doesn't remake the test. It goes back to the step that failed, which was linking together. But now it can link together the test uh, and example one functions with the simulator and, and it successfully do that to create the test executable, right? And then also uh, every one of our assignments has a test executable and what I call a simulation or a, a simulator, um, a simulation, which is really all, all these five assignments 
Um, this first week, we're going to be building a, um, or this first, sorry, that first week, the first um, unit, uh, we're building um, a hypo hypothetical machine simulation based on a hypothetical machine from your chapter one of the textbook. Right, so if you look in there, there's some hypothetical machine classes and some other stuff. Uh, week two, uh, sorry, unit two is about processes. So we have a, a simulator to simulate uh, process scheduling, um, actually to simulate the um, 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 scheduling and um, um, uh, um, what do you call it? blocking of processes. So, so the, 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 the state transitions of processes between being uh, ready to run and running and um, blocked. Uh, and, and, and yeah, um, week three is about, um, uh, our unit three is about um, um, deadlocks and starvation. So we have a little simulator about uh, simulating doing deadlock detection uh, and so on, yeah, so. Um, so anyway, back to this. So, so every every assignment, there, there'll be two executables. So um, the result of doing a, a make or a make all um, is to build all the executables. Now, if you look in your directory now, um, well, basically what was what was built was an executable called sim here and an executable called test. Okay, so test runs the unit tests. So you can run those by hand. So basically, um, I don't know if I want to, I, I think I explained this in the video again. This, this is again, this is a little bit of Linux command line stuff. So to, to run an executable, um, it has to be on your path. So this is similar to the path that you had to, to use a little bit when we were setting up the dev box. So, so likewise, in, in a Linux, in, in a bash shell, um, there's, there's an idea of, of a path environment variable. So anytime you run a command like, um, like um, let's do the, um, uh, the, the, how about the, the head command? So head is a command that you can run from the command line, which, which prints out the head of a file, the first five lines of text by default. So if you say head, of some file that text um, it'll display the first five lines or maybe more I guess so I want just the first two lines I could say head dash two yeah so that that gets just the first two lines I guess the default is a little bit more than five lines but whatever ten lines I guess the default is the first ten lines so. Um, so, but, but the point is, is that head is just a command, an executable that's somewhere in the system. So instead of where, like you do on, on MS-DOS, you can use, um, or sorry, instead of uh, which, you can use where, uh, I'm sorry, no, which. So, so it's where on, um, on MS-DOS, but it's, it's called, it's, you do it for which as which um, on Linux, but anyway, it does the same thing. It basically searches the path, and, and in particular, the head command actually lives in user bin, okay? So the reason why I'm saying all this um, to, to, um, to wrap this up is that my current directory, which you can get by using the pwd command, is not on my path, right? So if you just try and run sim, uh, it won't be able to find that because I don't have my current directory here on the path. So it's not one of the executables on the path um, that I just run. There is a test. So if you tried to run test, um, it'll find it, but it won't be your test that you just built. It'll be this other program with the same name and user bin, okay? So um, if you run a, run a command that's not on your path, you can specify the, the, the um, the full path to the command. So if I were to run my test in example 01, I could specify the full path from the root of the, of, of the file system. So slash home, vagrant, repos, the name of the repository assignment, example one tests. And that will actually run my unit tests, all right? But um, as shorthand, a single dot means the current directory. So uh, if, I'm, if I'm currently in, this example 01 directory that has a, 
a, a program that I want to run, I can use what's known as a relative path. So from the current directory, uh, look for a command called test uh, and run it. Okay. So you'll see me use that a lot. I just say dot slash test. So because it's, it's a bad idea to add things like like this to your path. So instead, we can just specify, okay, run the command relative to my, this is my current directory. So this is basically saying run test that's in my current directory. And that, that runs the, the unit tests here, right? Um, and if I get time today, so if, if you go through the video four, I, I show, so the example uh, assignment was to um, um, uh, actually add some code to ba basically test for if things are prime or not. And then to do that, uh, you want to write this is prime function so you can get these unit tests to pass, okay? Uh, likewise, I can also run the, the, the simulation, dot slash sim, um, but it doesn't really do anything, so, so you won't get any output from that, okay? Um, all right, so, so I showed you, like, uh, so, so in general, to, to, to build the assignments for this class, you'd start by doing a make clean, just to make, so, so you notice when I do that, that deleted the test and the sim, and it deleted all the object files, right? So you start by make clean, then you do a make or a make all um, to build all your executables. Um, Yeah, I'm gonna. Somebody's asking about groups. I will allow people to work group, work with groups um, um, for the the assignments for this class. So I prefer a group no more than two or three people. Um, so if, if you want something bigger, you maybe need to talk with me. But if you're just thinking of like somebody else or three of you, that's fine. So basically, what I'm gonna ask everybody to do: if you're working in a group, you still are gonna have to submit. Um, individually to my Leo online so everybody should submit basically the same submission package uh, and, and you all need to put all of your names as authors at the top of any files that you do for the assignments okay so, so I, I need to see everybody author but everybody does need to su submit um, basically the same work um, because um, our my Leo online um, has some issues with me trying to enter grades for people where I'm expecting to have a file submission, but you don't submit something. So, um, but, but yeah, beyond that, uh, do feel free to, to form a group. So we can talk about that more later as we get closer to the, so, so our first actual assignment really isn't due, not next week, but the week after that. So, um, um, so yeah, if everything builds here, I mean, you do want to make certain that you don't see any errors in, in the build. But if, if everything builds, uh, like I showed, you, you could run your unit test by hand, or you could use the make test target, which, um, oh, I'm sorry, make, make test actually only builds the test. So if you don't want to build everything, if you just, just want to build test, um, you could do make test. Likewise, you could do make sim to only build the sim executable. Notice that, that make doesn't rebuild stuff unless it has to, right? So only if I go in and, and, and make a modification to something that's used to build the test um, executable, would it rebuild the stuff that it needs to, right? Um, oh, but yeah, if you want to, you could run the unit test by saying make unit tests. Uh, that's the same, if, if you scroll up here, that's basically, you can see it's just calling dot slash test as if you did it by hand. Although it makes certain that it, that it uses colored output, uh, but the default is to use colored output, so, so it really doesn't matter. You can just do it by hand and you'll get the colored output as well. So. Um, then finally, we, I won't talk about the beautify the docs today, but finally, what you need, to, what you need to do, all you really need to do for the um, the um, the practice assignment for today is from this ex, uh, example zero one, do a make submit. Right. So it makes submit once you've got something that you want to submit. I mean, hopefully you've got everything working and you want to submit. You'll, you'll you'll need to come to a command line. You can't do this from um, Visual Studio. 
inside of Visual Studio, I've got it set up so that you can do clean and a build and run the test, but, but you can't really do the, do the submission. So, so you will have to pull up a command line terminal. But if you do a make submit, basically it does some things. So it runs it through the code um, style checker to make certain that everybody's code conforms to class style guidelines. Um, and then basically, I mean, you could, so my, the, the submit, I might do some extra things. So for this example uh, assignment, I'm, I'm running a little script in order to gather some, some info about your system, right? Um, but uh, basically for most of these assignments, what make submit is doing is besides beautifying your code using uncrustify, it's um, gathering everything together that I need to grade your assignment and creating a, a tar.gzip file. This, this is a, uh, what's known as a tar archived and then it's compressed using gzip compression, all right? But that is basically the, the thing that you need to submit for your assignments and that you need to submit for this uh, practice assignment for this week. This example 01 tar.gz. So, you know, again, if you go to a file browser, uh, after you do make submit, there'll be an example 01 tar.gz. Um, inside of your dev box, you could double click on that and you'll see what's in there. So, but, but you should, really shouldn't build this by hand because each assignment, um, I basically auto grade these assignments. I'm, so I'm expecting particular things. So you really have to run the make submit command. Um, uh, but that's the thing you need to upload to, um, to my Leo online, right? And, and once again, you know, if you want to, you could go back to your host system um, and navigate to your repository. Um, and that file, and that will be like, so for example, if you're running your browser normally on your host machine, like your Windows machine or whatever, uh, you can go to the assignment, activities assignment, uh, go to the assignment that you want to make a submission for, um, and you guys will see something else here, but then, you know, you'll, you'll select the thing to upload a file uh, to, to assignment here. Um, so somebody um, asked a question that you're seeing an error. Um, do you see more information before that? So, so, so people might see a, a problem trying to run the uh, system, the system info script, right? Can you show me all of the error that, that you saw um, uh, from make submit? Right? Was there stuff before that? So, so show me like copy and paste everything from make submit till you get your next prompt. Was there anything else besides that, that message? Mr. McGowan, can, can you hear me? Was there anything else? Can you copy and paste uh, the the additional stuff? So what I'm uh, while while he's trying to work on that, what what probably is happening is one of the steps um, when you were setting up the dev box when you were installing Git, there was one thing that you had to do, um, which was to um, um, set the carriage return line feeds so that you save them um, to use Unix carriage return line feeds. If you didn't do that, if you accepted the default, um, so basically what you see here is, is this, uh, so, so I don't know if uh, the people on my group chat can see this now, but uh, people, uh, if you're watching this video later, probably can't see this, so maybe I'll open up an editor and, and show the whole error that you, that you might get here. Uh, let's open up uh, Emacs, maybe. So, um, uh, so there's no new lines here. So let me um, let me go to the the place that I want to find it here. So um, basically, here when you do the make submit, 
you're getting an error message and then on the, the, the next line, the, the make submit fails here. Um, so basically, if you're getting this message here, that's because there's uh, Windows type new lines in the file instead of, instead of the expected Unix new lines, which most likely means that you didn't set the setting correctly when you installed Git, okay? So, I mean, you could just re, uh, you could do a, you could delete your dev box, uh, uninstall Git and reinstall it, making certain that you get that option set correctly. If you don't want to do that though, if you do this, and, and if, if Mr. McGowan could try this out and verify if it works or not, you can run, you should have a, a tool called DOS2 Unix uh, installed on your system. So if you do DOS2 Unix on the um, system info script, um, it will convert the, the um, new line endings from Windows or anything else into the expected Unix uh, command line endings. And then you should be able to run that system info by hand if you want to, or now if you do the make submit, um, uh, hopefully that would fix it for you. And if you can try that out uh, and let me know, but that, that will probably fix it, okay? The, the reason why, you know, I mentioned that, so, so you might run a, across the same error trying to do a make submit or in other places uh, for the assignments, right? So if you don't go back, go by, back and fix your, um, your Git, you just have to remember that um, and maybe run the DOS to Unix on any uh, scripts that have the, the wrong uh, new line. So, so somebody said that that did end up working for them. So yeah, try that out. I'm pretty, I'm 99.9% you know, I'm, I'm certain that anybody that gets this error about the um, uh, no such file with, the, with this backslash R has basically got uh, window style new lines on their scripts because they checked it out using Git and it converted it all to Windows new line. So. Um, you might have to, yeah. So um, I'm not certain that this might be the only, uh, yeah, I think I do have some other scripts. So you might have other problems with other scripts where um, it's got the wrong new line ending. So you'd get a similar message that, um, 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 right. Um, so yeah, there's that, right. So if you're worried about that, um, and, and if you had a pretty easy time setting up your dev box, you can always do a, a, a vagrant destroy of your dev box to delete it. So if you go back to your host machine, if you, if you ever want to, you can always just do vagrant destroy. And in fact, you don't really have to worry about it because all the work you do is actually being done in that those repository directory on your host machine that the save. So even, even the work that you've done, might have done, um, won't go away when you do a vagrant destroy. So you can always destroy your dev box, uh, uninstall Git, then reinstall it, making certain that you set the new line endings correctly, um, and then redo your vagrant up to, to create a new um, dev box if you want to. That would fix it once and for all. Or if you don't want to try, if, if, if you're fine with your dev box, you might have to use this DOS to Unix command um, if you see these new line um, problems on some scripts when you try to run stuff. So. Um, so a question somebody asked um, a while before um, that I kind of skipped over, um, asking where you can find the make submit uh, and how to turn it in. So I did talk about that a little bit. Uh, quickly, I'll go back over that um, one more time. So, let me just do a make clean, make clean of my lib. So to do a submission for this practice assignment or for any uh, assignment going forward in this class, you do have to run make submit from the command line. So first of all, you have to have a dev box working. You really can't do this unless you have got the, the make build system and you're working uh, inside of uh, the, the class dev box like I set it up for you. To do the, a make submit, you, you do have to open up a terminal. You really can't do this inside of Visual Studio or something. So open up a terminal, 
change into repos, um, change into the CSCI 430 repos, right? Um, before your first assignment or before this practice assignment, there is one step that I, I probably should make an announcement, but you do have to first go into the lib subdirectory, libs subdirectory and do a make there. This will build the shared library that's needed for all the assignments, including the practice assignment. But after you do that, uh, change back up and then change into the assignments. And then in this case, for change into the example 01, the practice assignment. Uh, and then you'd have to do like a make clean, a make to build everything. Um, and then you normally you'd want to do like a make unit tests um, in order to run your unit test while you're um, working on your assignment. Uh, but then uh, once you're, you're um, happy that your assignment is working, um, then you do your make submit, all right? Um, so yeah, while well, that's compiling, somebody asked if you have to submit an error-free file. Uh, well, you know, I mean, some people sometimes don't get everything working. So I, I, you do, you won't get a lot of credit if you submit something that, that doesn't compile. And I'll talk more about that, probably not on this session, but maybe next week, right? But uh, as long as you ensure that things are, that you're able to compile stuff, you'll probably at least get 50% for the assignment. And, and I always give you assignments that are compilable to start with. So you just need to ensure that you only make small changes um, and, and, um, um, and, and that the small changes that you make don't cause you to have compilation problems, okay? But, um, yeah, I mean, if you don't get everything working, you might not have all your unit, you might have the thing compiling, but you're not getting all your unit tests to pass. Uh, and in that case, like if you have no unit test passing, I mean, you might still get about 50% on the assignment, but if you've got a couple, but not all the unit tests passing, you'll get partial credit. Uh, and, and in general, you have to have all the unit tests passing to get 100% on the assignment. So, so if everything makes, so this is the kind of the important step on that, you really do need to make certain that, that everything makes and you can run the tests. Uh, and you should never be adding code if your code is currently in a state where it doesn't cleanly compile, all right? So after you do that, you can do the make unit test to run the test or you can run them by hand, right? So here's where you want to work on the assignment and add code in order to get some or all these unit tests to be passing. And then finally, back to the original question, here's where you do the make submit. So this will build, in this case, it'll build um, a file called um, uh, example one dot, uh, dot tar dot gz this file here right so you can see this from um, the uh, using a directory listing on your terminal you can find this in your your guest machine on your dev box if you um, navigate to the assignment that you're working on you should see it in there okay um, and yeah, I mean you could submit it I mean you could open up a web browser in your dev box log into my Leo online and upload that example one tar dot gz or as I told other people, I mean, this, this whole directory is shared between your host and your guest. So if you go back to your host, like a browser on your host machine, and you go to your assignments, and then in there you'll see something different. Uh, in fact, maybe I shouldn't be showing this because you can see some people that have submitted stuff already for assignment one. But um, here you, the, there'll be a way to um, submit a file for your assignment, and that's what you should submit. You should, you should submit the... Um, um, in this case, the example one.tar.gz file that you make using the make submit process. All right. I, I hope hopefully that that cleared up. If you still have questions on that, you know you can try and get with me or, or you know, email me. But, uh, but yeah, I mean, the basic way, the, 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 the kind of the, the quick answer to what you need to do to, to make your submission or, or where you can find the make submit is you have to have your dev box working, first of all. Second of all, you have to open up a terminal. Third of all, you have to navigate correctly to your assignment, figure out how to use these make commands to, to build and, and test and stuff. 
but ultimately you have to, to run a make submit and that will create um, um, a file called something.tar.gz. So example one.tar.gz um, in this case, or assignment one.tar.gz for assignment one. And that's the file you have to actually submit um, for the assignments. So. All right, um, we're getting pretty late here. So, um, like I said, I, I don't know if I'm gonna uh, keep keep asking out questions if you have them. Um, so, really, you don't have to get the example one working before you submit it. I'm only checking that you could add, that you actually correctly made the submission file for this for this practice assignment. But but of course, for assignment one, you need to actually work on the assignment. Uh, but if you follow along with the video that I had for this week, um, you can see, um, so uh, maybe I'll just start that for a few minutes, but, but maybe we can talk about this more a little bit next week. Um, so to work on like this example assignment or ultimately to work on your assignment one, you need to use an editor. So I suggest you use Visual Studio, which is this one here. If you don't have a preference, um, I mean, if you already know, Sublime or Atom or something, feel free to use those. I, I've, I've added some hooks um, in the Visual Studio so you can use it more easily. So it's, it's kind of already set up to be able to work on projects from this class. Okay. So when you first open up Visual Studio, it won't have any folder open. So I've already got my project folder open here. So let's close that folder. So when you first open up Visual Studio, if, the, if you're going to use that to work on the assignments, if you go to here, th this shows which current project actually folder you have open. If you see no folder open, you have to start by opening a folder in Visual Studio. And, and it's important that you open actually the top level of the repository. So you don't want to open up the spe specific assignment. So what I mean by that for visual, people using Visual Studio, you want to do a file um, open folder this one, control K, control O. And you want to open up, um, you know, the home repos, that one. O open up at the top level of the repository. Don't, don't open up, don't continue navigating down here and, and open up like, you know, a, a sub assignment, like example one or assignment one. So go to repos um, and, and select that, right? So when you open up a folder in Visual Studio, um, in this case, you know, you basically, basically, again, this is like a file navigator. Um, so you can work on any of the assignments, assignment one, two, three, four, including this example assignment. So to work on an example, like, like a particular assignment, you just navigate down to that and open up the, the test and the function or whatever file that you need to add code to, okay? So I'll talk more about this next week um, and also talk about the hypothetical machine. But for example, for the, this example um, assignment uh, that I showed in the video that you can watch, um, what, you, what you had to do, if, if you look at the tests, um, close that off. Um, if you look at the test case, the, the, the first thing that's being tested is a function called is prime. I can't remember if I gave this to you or not, but, but I, 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 maybe I gave you the prototype, but it wasn't working yet, right? So, so what you're gonna be doing on your assignments is similar to this. So um, I, I give you tests, but, but, but uh, that call functions or call objects, make objects and call member functions of, of classes. Uh, but, but you have to do the implementation of some of the things. So in this case, like is, is prime is supposed to take um, uh, an integer and return a Boolean value. So return true if the number is prime and return false if it's not prime. So um, if is prime returns true, the, the check will, will succeed because check is expecting when you call this, that the result to be true. Or, if you, uh, or likewise, if I pass in a number that's not prime like four, um, the is prime function is supposed to return false, 
Um, uh, so, so in that case, we want to check that the return or the result was false if we're calling something that's not prime, all right? So, um, so real quickly, like, like I was showing you from the command line tool, uh, when you run the unit test, you'll see that this unit test is, this first one might be passing, I can't remember. Um, go back to the code here. Um, so yeah, the, the stub that I gave you um, is just um, retur always returning true. So it, it'll actually pass the first three tests because, because you, you're expecting it returns true for one, two, and three, which are all prime. Right, but it, it, the the first one I'll end up failing is or should fail is four because it's going to return that four is prime, but it's going to return true, but we're expecting it to tell us this false. Right. So um, so again, if you build this and if I run those tests and and you look, uh, we should see that the first failing test is the test at line forty here for this for this practice assignment. Right. Once it builds here, uh, it's already 3:53. So I'll probably just have a, well, I'll just have enough time to show you this um, finished building here and the and the test, um, and then I can add a little bit of code to, to get that to actually um, succeed. Right. So 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 it actually built with no errors. But if we run the test. Here I'm running again from the command line. But if we run our unit test and scroll back up here. You'll see that the first failing test is the one on line 40, like I was um, saying, right? Um, so I could get that test to, to, to succeed. Like that, right? So, so if it's non-prime, if it's four, which is not prime, I could just return false, right? Um, so there are keyboard shortcuts in here to, to do your build and, and run the tests um, inside of Visual Studio that have been set up for you. Um, I believe if you go to run, um, I have to remember, it's been a little bit of a while since I used the Visual Studio here. I, I'm sure I have it in the video. Um, you can always do the command palette, uh, control shift P, I think, yeah. Control Shift P and then build. Um, oh, tasks. Uh, anyway, so there's the task to, to like called the build task. Uh, it has a shortcut key, Control Shift B. So that would be doing the same thing as doing a make all, right? Um, from the command line, if, if you do Control Shift B. So since I um, since I added some code here, if I do Control Shift B. Um, it'll run the build task, which which causes make all to be um, called. And you'll see it there's a, down here in the terminal. It's, it's really just running as if you're running from the terminal, but it's doing it for yourself. So it does the make all. Notice that it rebuilt the example one functions.cpp because I made a code change in there, and then it relinked the test executable because the example one functions object file had changed. So it had to re rerun the test file. You can run your unit test by doing Control Shift T. That'll run the unit tests. So now when I ran the unit test, you'll now see that it's actually passing the tests. The, the first one that's failing is this one here at line um, 44 now, right? Because now it, it expects six should be false, but but we're, we're still returning true for now. Okay. All right, but yeah, I've kind of run out of time. That's all I've got for today. So we'll talk more about those next week. You still got a little bit of time for your first assignment. Um, so I'll probably actually start talking about assignment one. You, you guys can watch the video uh, where I go into more detail about this example practice assignment and, and how you get all these unit tests to work. Um, all right, and you can all you can do a clean inside of Visual Studio by Control Shift C. We'll, we'll run the make clean to, to make to clean up everything if you need to restart a build from scratch. So. Okay, uh, any last, any, any quick questions here before I stop this session?
All right, with that, I hope that was useful. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll end the session here as usual. I'll post this uh, for uh, offline viewers. Um, but um, yeah, so get that, uh, get that practice assignment submitted. If you haven't done it yet, I'll probably still consider it as on time if you can get it done today here. So, uh, but yeah, see you guys later. Bye.